all of us have sometimes had problems due to a dead car battery. Here is a simple circuit you can assemble in a couple of hours using very few components and for very little money. As long as your car battery is able to take a charge, this homemade charger will put you back on the road, provided you have an AC outlet available. The first thing you need is a step-down transformer with a 127 volt primary or 220 volts depending on your country and a 12 volt 20 amp secondary. Next, you need a diode bridge which can be purchased either as a package or as separate diodes for wiring the bridge yourself. The diodes must be able to handle 20 amps, same as the transformer. Across the output of the diode bridge, you must connect an electrolytic capacitor rated about 1000 microfarads at 50 volts, with the sole purpose of preventing the humming of the relay due to the pulsating voltage delivered by the diode bridge. The next component is a relay with a 12 volt DC coil. The relay's contacts may have several poles or just one, as long as it has at least one normally closed contact, that is, a contact that lets the current go through when the relay coil is not energized. If the relay has several normally closed contacts, you can wire them in parallel for longer life. To energize and de-energize the relay, you will need a small general purpose NPN transistor. In parallel with the relay coil, you must connect a small reverse BIOS diode in order to avoid damage to the transistor and the LED indicator. Then you must connect a 10K resistor and a 10K preset potentiometer, also called a pot, to the base circuit of the transistor in order to set the shutoff voltage for the charger. Also, connect two small diodes in series from the transistor emitter to the negative bus for charge current regulation purposes. It is also convenient to include a 5 amp fuse at the primary winding of the transformer to protect your charger from an overload. It can also be handy, although not essential, to add a switch at the AC input so you can turn off the charger without unplugging it from the power outlet. You can install alligator clips at the outlet of the charger, a red one for the positive and a black one for the negative. The principle is as follows. When you connect the charger to a partially discharged battery, which is delivering about 10 volts, and then plug the charger into AC outlet, the load introduced by the battery prevents the charger's DC supply made up of the transformer and the diode bridge from producing its maximum voltage, holding all voltage in the circuit at about 10 volts. Thus, the current supplied to the battery will be close to the charger's full capacity and the voltage of the battery starts increasing until it gets to about 15 volts, while the charging current starts decreasing. At this point it is worth mentioning that the voltage delivered by the diode bridge is made up of pulsating DC with a maximum peak of 16.968 volts, which implies that as the voltage of the battery is going up, the energy available to supply a charging current to the battery starts going down as the peaks of the pulses are being reached so the pulsating waveform becomes narrower and the available energy will be less and less. This provides some sort of regulation of the charging current supplied to the battery. When the battery voltage starts exceeding 16 volts, the potentiometer places enough voltage between the base and emitter of the transistor to overcome the barrier voltage of the two diodes connected in series to the emitter 
and provides the necessary bias so that the transistor conducts and triggers the relay, opening its normally closed contacts, thus disconnecting the battery and terminating the charging cycle. When this happens, the diode bridge is relieved from the battery charging current and its voltage goes up to 16.968 volts or maybe more depending on the power grid voltage. This rise reinforces the conduction of the transistor so the relay will remain energized until the charger is disconnected from the AC line. For initially calibrating the potentiometer, you must proceed as follows. With no battery connected to the output alligator clips, plug the charger into the AC outlet with a minimum of 127 volts or 220 volts depending on your country. Turn the pot back and forth and leave it at the end position where the LED indicator remains turned off. At this position, the relay contacts will stay closed regardless of the charge in the battery. Now you have to connect a partially discharged battery to the output terminals, making sure the red alligator clip is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and the black alligator clip is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Now, connect the voltmeter set to the proper scale to the terminals of the battery so you can monitor its voltage. The battery will start charging and the voltage reading will go up. When the battery voltage reaches 16 volts, the pot must be turned slowly until the relay clicks and the LED indicator goes on, whereby the relay contacts will open and disconnect the battery, which will stop the charging cycle. The potentiometer calibration is now done and the charger is ready to be used. Whenever you use your charger, it's important to connect the battery first and then plug the charger to the power outlet. Failure to follow this sequence will cause the LED indicator to go on and the relay not delivering a charge to the battery. In such case, merely unplug the charger from the AC outlet for about 5 seconds and then plug it back and the battery will start charging normally. I hope this video has been useful for you. Thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Chavatarin.